External SSD storage is kind of a big thing at the moment. Prices have been falling considerably over recent years. Apple are charging extremely premium prices to upgrade from the base 256 gig of storage to anything you buy from them. And with subscription prices increasing seemingly every month, now is a great time to take things into your own more affordable hands and buy one or maybe even a number of SSDs. Maybe it's for backing up your data, for editing videos or expanding the number of games that you can install. There is an SSD for everybody, depending on your use case and technical skill level. I wanted to cover these off in this SSD buyer's guide video to help you make the right decision and prevent you from uh, buying something that might not actually fit your needs or even from buying an SSD that is the most likely to slow down or even outright fail over time. So we're going to have some recommendations including everything I cover off in this video linked down in the description below and those should cover each specific use case. Now one of the most common mistakes made when buying an SSD is just going over to Amazon, entering external SSD and then just buying either the top result or just looking for the fastest one available. Now in this situation, the first result might be the one that has countless reports of sporadic failures with many of my friends previously losing their data because of this drive. I will never again. And after watching this video, you might not want to either. And with the fastest drive, well, what if the computer you're using doesn't even support those fast speeds? And so in which case, you're paying an unnecessary premium. So starting off with the most common type of SSD, and this will cover most PC users, regardless of how old your PC or laptop is, and Mac users as well, and that is USB. Now, most PCs and laptops support the USB 3.2 standard. Now I say most because we are gonna get onto some of the more faster standards in just a moment. Now the USB 3.2 standard has a maximum transfer speed of around 1050 megabytes per second, which means if you pick up a drive that advertises something like 2000 megabytes per second transfer speeds, then you are paying money for something you may never use, unless of course you are happy to pay the extra now to then future-proof yourself for perhaps your next computer. Now for this case, I would recommend either the Crucial X9 Pro, which you can buy in one, two, and four terabyte models, uh, the Lexar ES3, which comes in one or two terabyte models, or the Crucial X10 Pro, if you want to future-proof yourself because it supports a new uh, 3.2 2x2 standard, which is double the speed of the others. Again, providing your machine supports those speeds or you want to future-proof yourself. If, however, you are lucky enough to have a device that supports faster speeds over USB 4 or Thunderbolts, then you can benefit from buying a faster external SSD. Now, there are currently two popular Thunderbolt standards. You've got Thunderbolt 4 and Thunderbolt 5, but of course you will need to check the device that you are using to see if it supports the faster Thunderbolt 5 speeds. Now, for example, the latest M4 Pro Mac Mini only supports Thunderbolt 5 on its rear ports, and then the base spec M4 Mac Mini only supports Thunderbolt 4 on its rear ports. Now for these types of drives, there aren't many that are readily available like plug and play drives, though there are some available from the likes of uh, Adata and Team Group, but there isn't really enough data available for me to know how reliable these drives are over time, uh, like we have with more other well-known SSDs. Now two Thunderbolt 5 drives I would recommend, for now at least with that caveat, are either the Lacey Rugged SSD Pro 5s or the OWC Envoy Ultra drives, which whilst they are expensive, are a plug and play Thunderbolt 5 drive that works great from my experience. Now in this situation though, and if you are still comfortable doing so, my recommendation would actually be to buy either a Thunderbolt 4 or Thunderbolt 5 enclosure and then buying a high performance and widely known like good quality reliable M.2 SSD. You can't see it in here like the Samsung 990 Evo or 990 Pro M.2 SSDs. Now these are the storage chips which you can then fit into the enclosure. Now I've been using this one from uh, Acasis, Acasis and it's been flawless and very very fast. And this way, using a compatible device like my M4 Pro Mac Mini, you can reach speeds of up to 6,000 megabytes per second, which is a huge step up from USB 3.2 speeds. Just be sure that you're using an actual uh, Thunderbolt 5 cable, otherwise you'll be wondering why you aren't actually getting the full speed. Now for the budget buyer, for a two terabyte drive, then I would go with 
either the Crucial X9 or the Lexar ES3 again, which at the time of shooting this video is currently discounted by like 30% which makes it significantly cheaper than the Crucial Drive currently at the time of shooting this video. They are slower drives, but again, we're on a budget here. Now for best performance, then really we are looking at those Thunderbolt 5 drives. And I would again go for the Acasis enclosure and a suitable M.2 SSD, because with the enclosure, you can upgrade that internal SSD whenever you want. And currently that means you could pick up an eight terabytes like WD Black SN80X and have an ultra fast Thunderbolt 5 SSD for still cheaper than Apple Charge for a two terabyte upgrade, which is, is just nuts. Now for backup, you don't really need a fast SSD, although it does help when you, you know, just wanna plug something in and grab a quick backup. In which case, I'll just divert your attention back to one of the previously mentioned performance SSD options. And of course, if you are happy to like hook up an SSD and manage your own backups with something like Apple's Time Machine or Windows Backup, then great. That's fine. Now Synology also offers this uh, B drive SSD, which along with an SSD comes with a load of software that helps you manage these backups by doing things like uh, keeping up to the past five revisions. You can also back up your photos and videos from your mobile phone whilst you have the drive plugged into a Mac or PC on the same network. So it kind of creates your like own cloud backup area, but in your own kind of network and own home and like everything's local, you're not paying subscription fees or anything like that. And then you have some more unique solutions such as this one uh, from Unify Drive with the UT2 who kindly agreed to sponsor this video. And this is a really interesting device. So it is a pocket size SSD, which you can fit out with up to 16 terabytes of M.2 SSD storage that also has a built-in backup battery, uh, provides one-click backup of SD and CF Express cards for you know professionals and creatives like myself. It has wireless connectivity, ethernet connectivity. It even has a HDMI port on this thing that supports up to 8K, which you can then hook up to you know, a TV or monitor to review footage directly from the SSD. And because of that network connectivity, you can then access and even share those files remotely. Uh, you can also even use this as a regular SSD over, you know, normal wire as well. Now, the idea here is that for creatives on the go, I can be safe in the knowledge that once I finish a shoot, I just pop in my cards, press a button on the side, and I just know that my card has been fully backed up to the internal SSD on here. Now, especially if you are using a multiple shooters, you slot the card in and just wait for the backup to finish. And also, so when you are outside and you don't have any Wi-Fi networks to connect to you, you can basically turn this into its own portable hotspot by pushing this button on the side. And now you can connect to it from your laptop, from multiple laptops and uh, collaborate all whilst out and about. And with this being available over the network, it means others can also have access to the downloaded uh, files on here and sync the files that they need to then work on, you know, whichever project they're currently working on. So this is kind of like a portable NAS system, which we'll talk about more in just a moment, which is also, you know, pretty rugged for throwing into a backpack. There's also an app you can use to review all of your files and your footage from your phone. Uh, there's a web portal, uh, you can access it from your laptop. So there are multiple ways that you can get in to see the files on this thing. And then you can pick one up and use the link in the video description down below. Now, speaking of rugged, if you are traveling, then you may want to prioritize a rugged drive that can survive a little more when you know, thrown into the backpack and what have you. Now here, I would recommend uh, either of the Lacey rugged SSDs, either the, the Mini, the Pro or the Pro 5, if you really want that fast Thunderbolt 5 speeds that I talked about earlier. These drives are IP67 water resistant and due to that rugged enclosure are drop and crush resistant. But for most people, the simple Samsung T7 Shield will do a great job. It's IP65 rated, it has drop resistance for up to three meters, which is good enough for you know most traveling situations and is USB 3.2 Gen 2, so runs up to uh, 1,050 megabytes per second. And then for the uh, PS5 and PS5 Pro, I can recommend the WD Black SN80 or the 850X M2 SSD. This is like a real mouthful, um, which has solid performance and transfer speeds that are actually in some cases better than even the internal PS5 drive. I've actually used this in my own PS5 for the last few years and the PS5 Pro more recently. Zero issues there and it's super easy to fit, uh, even if you're not used to, you know, taking computers apart. And then ultimately at the end of the day, no matter which SSD drive you use, it is always recommended that you keep a backup because the, uh, you know, the inevitable will, well, I guess inevitably happen at some points. The SSD might fail, you might lose everything, you might drop it and crush it. 
So always keep a copy on a separate location if you must. Now for my Mac at home, I've been using Backblaze's cloud backup for the last three, four, five years. It is nine bucks per month and includes unlimited storage and also covers off any SSDs that are connected locally to the Mac. Now with that said, there is still one limitation of using an SSD as external storage, which is that there are certain limits to how large those SSD drives can actually be like. Currently, eight terabytes is likely the biggest drive you will find. So to go beyond that, you're looking at you know either buying multiple SSDs, which is fine if you travel, but if you just want to use this within your home or your office, then expanding to something else like a NAS might be a better option since with a NAS, you can add multiple uh, traditional drives or even SSDs and join them together to create one much larger pool of storage for you to use. Now we've got around 40 terabytes of storage here at the studio with our Synology NAS. And actually I made a video all about this NAS, which you can go and watch right here.